Watch today as I break down an insane take on a Sarkhan the Dragon Speaker deck unlike any other. Welcome to the Oath Breakdown. We provide fun and enjoyable Magic the Gathering content for you. And if you want to see more, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when we have new content for you. Real quick, I want to thank my friend Martin for this deck tech challenge. This particular printing of the Planeswalker Sarkhan is very underappreciated with only six total deck lists on Oathbreaker Rec. So you can blame him for this insane idea. On the Oath Breakdown, I break down a budget Oathbreaker deck designed to introduce new players to the format, and I build it back up so you can see why the deck was designed the way it was designed. The cost of this deck includes shipping and the cost of our Planeswalker, but not our basic lands. Now let's get into it. In today's deck, we are going to attack our opponents with our Planeswalker, Sarkhan, the Dragon Speaker. For 3 and 2 red, he is a 4 loyalty planeswalker. If we plus 1 him until the end of turn, he becomes a legendary 4-4 four, four red dragon creature token with flying, indestructible, and haste. If we minus 3 him, he will do 4 damage to target creature. And if we minus 6 Sarkhan, we gain an emblem that says we draw 2 additional cards during our draw step, but at the end of our turn we have to discard our hand. Sarkhan the Dragon Speaker's plus one will give us the strange opportunity that we usually only get with a Gideon Planeswalker, and that is the ability to have an indestructible creature to attack with. This is a little bit better than a Gideon Planeswalker, however, because this is fast and in the air since he has both haste and flying. His minus three is spot removal that at four damage actually hits a large variety of creatures. And finally, his very achievable minus six will provide us with some dangerous card advantage. The signature spell that is the core of this wild strategy is Blazing Shoal. You can play Blazing Soul either for its cost of X and two red, or you may remove a red card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand from the game rather than pay Blazing Soul's mana cost. Target creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn. So by throwing away big cards we don't need, we can sometimes play this spell for free and pump Sarkhan immensely. The other beauty of this signature spell is it is an arcane spell, and there's one or two more arcane spells in the deck that can splice into that that we can get multiple uses out of, so it can act as an engine for a little bit of card advantage for certain key cards. Now that we know what cards are going to be sitting in our command zone, let's dig into the game plan. This deck wants to use ramp, value, and board wipes, and pump to bring the pain with our Voltron out Sarkon Commander. Our goal is to swing with our pumped indestructible flying planeswalker until all of our opponents are dead. This is jank at its finest, and I would be lying if I said this deck was higher than a 5 power level. Now on to the breakdown. In our first section, we will ramp to play our highly costed big boy in... Rituals of a Hero. I do love me some Voltron. Our first card, Generator Servant, costs one in red. He's a 2-1 elemental. We can tap and sacrifice it to add two mana of any color. If that mana is spent on a creature spell, that creature gains haste till end of turn. Mannequin costs two. It's a 1-1 and it taps for a colorless. Runaway Stingkin costs one in a red and is a 1-1. Whenever we cast a red spell, if it has fewer than three 1-1 counters on it, we can put a 1-1 counter on it. If we can remove three 1-1 counters on it, we can produce three red mana. This is just a great way to kind of bank some mana for some big turns. Desperate Ritual costs one in a red. It is an arcane spell that will produce us three red mana. And since it's arcane cost to splice it onto our signature spell is also one in a red, we might be able to actually use this ritual multiple times. Pyretic Ritual for one in a red also produces three red mana. And Rite of Flame for one red produces two red mana Gadrak the Crown Scourge costs two in a red, and he's a 5-4 legendary creature dragon with flying. Gadrak can attack unless we control four or more artifacts, and at the beginning of our end step, we get to create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. Since we're running some board wipes and some creature removal, we might actually be able to capitalize on him frequently. Along with Sarkhan's final ability, let's look at some other ways we can stay in some game with some card advantage. 
Avaricious Dragon costs 2 and 2 red and is a 4-4 four, four flying creature. At the beginning of our draw step, we draw an additional card, and at the beginning of our end step, we discard our hand. Gear of Her Orrery for 4 is an artifact that says each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. Since our emblem and some other cards will make us discard our hand at the end of turn, we will be able to capitalize on this card way more than our opponents. And we're running 24 lands in the deck. So we're definitely going to run this, even though it might benefit our opponents as well. Grafted Skull Cap for four generic mana says, at the beginning of our draw step, we draw a card. At the end of our turn, we discard our hand. Now moving on, in a Voltron strategy, it is very important that we have additional creatures just in case. We might end up having trouble getting our commander through or keeping him on the board if he keeps getting targeted down. So here are some backup. Ginger Brute for one colorless is a 1-1 creature with haste. If we pay one, he becomes unblockable as long as our opponents don't have a creature that also has haste to block him. We're playing Sus Suspicious Bookcase for two. It's a 0-4 wall, but it says if we pay three and tap it, target creature can't be blocked at this turn. Just a really good way to get our big damage Planeswalker through. Avatar of Fury for six into red is a 6-6 six, six avatar, but if our opponents control seven or more lands, it costs six less to cast. He has flying and we can pay one red mana to pump him by plus one plus oh. The beauty of Avatar Fury in this deck is when discard to Blazing Shoal, it's gonna give our commander plus eight plus oh, making him huge, but in the event we don't have him, He's often not going to actually cost us 8 mana, so he allows us kind of to cheat on his cost, but also on the power we can pump. And next up, we have Sin Prodder. He's a 3-2 with Menace. At the beginning of our upkeep, we reveal the top card of our library. Any opponent may have us put that card into our graveyard. If the player does, Sin Prodder deals damage to that player equal to the card's convert mana cost. Otherwise, we put that card into our hand. This is beautiful because it gives us an idea of what the top card of our deck is, and it forces opponents to choose which cards we get to play. And no matter what choice they make, if they put a high-costed card into our graveyard, they're going to take that damage just if, if we had discarded it to pump our commander. So. And next, we have Molten Steel Dragon for 4 and 2 Phyrexian mana. It has flying and is a 4-4 dragon, and if we pay 1 Phyrexian red mana, we can pump him until end of turn. The beauty of this is, again, he is a relatively high-costed creature that we can discard if we need to. We can pump him with our life if we just need to eke out the last points of damage to win the game or knock out an opponent. So it's definitely useful even if it's not the most mana efficient. In our next section, we need to look at how we're going to make Sarkhan swing big and how we get him there with Powering the Dragon. Agitator Ant costs two and a red, and it's a 2-2 creature, Insect. At the beginning of my end step, each player may put a 1-1 counter on a creature they control, and then that creature is goaded. So every player who chooses to put a 1-1 counter on their creature is going to have to attack with that creature next turn, but they can't attack us or a Planeswalker we control. So in a weird way, not only does this power up Sarkhan, but it also keeps an attacker off of us from each player. Power Conduit for two colorless mana says tap remove a counter from a permanent you control, choose one, put a charge counter on target artifact or put a woman counter on target creature. Power Conduit's a great way to take other counters we have in the deck and turn them into one one counters we can put on Sarkin. Since enchantments and equipment will fall off of our Planeswalker when he stops being a creature, putting one one counters on him is not a terrible strategy. Next, we have Curse of Stock Prey. For one in a red, we enchant a player with this curse. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to that enchant player, we put a one one counter on that creature. But moving on, the best way to increase our damage is just to straight up double it. So let's look at how we do that in Double Dragons. Blood Mist for three and a red reads that at the beginning of combat on our turn, target creature we control gains double strike till end of turn. Berserker's Onslaught for three and two red just says attacking creatures we control have double strike. Overblaze for three and a red says each time target permanent would deal damage to target creature or player this turn, it deals double that damage to that creature or player instead. I do believe that's been urged to say any target. This also has splice onto Arcane, so we might actually be able to use Overblaze to 
double our Planeswalker's power after having already played Blazing Soul. So that is an amazing way to really eke out some extra value. Insult to Injury. Uh, the Insult side says damage can't be prevented this turn, and if a source we control would deal damage this turn, it deals double that damage instead. An Injury reads for two and a red. We play it from our graveyard, and it's going to deal two damage to target creature and two damage to target player. The beauty of this is it is also a uh, spot removal for one of our later sections, but if we are able to somehow pay the six mana, on our turn, we can actually turn that into four damage to target creature and four damage to target player as well. Also, split cards like this, when you're talking about the total converted mana cost of a card, when you're discarding to say something like our signature spell, is the total of both cards. So this card actually discards to give our creature plus six plus O. Oh. And the final card in this section, Fury of the Hordes, costs five and two red and says you may exile two red cards from your hand rather than play, paying its mana cost. We untap all creatures that attack this turn, and after this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. This is probably the easiest way to double our damage by taking double the combats. Now the next thing we need to think about is removal and mass removal, because that will help keep our opponent's threats off the board, as well as any pesky blockers we really don't want to deal with. So this section is out of the way. First off, we have Dead and Gone. For our purposes, it's got a converted mana cost of four. If we play Dead, we deal two damage to target creature. If we play Gone, we return a creature we don't control to its owner's hand. So the first half, Pyrokinesis for four and two red, says we may exile a red card from our hand rather than paying its casting cost. And it does four damage divided amongst any number of target creatures. Volcanic Salvo for 10 and two red, says the spell cost X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures we control, and Volcanic Salvo does six damage to each of up to two target creatures and two target planeswalkers. So being able to use this as spot removal for two targets is amazing, especially when those targets are our opponent's planeswalkers. Next up, we have Active Aggression for three and two Phyrexian Red. It allows us to gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. We untap that creature and gains haste. Not only does this increase our damage, and I know it's probably weird for it to be in a removal section, but it does remove that blocker or that creature from our opponent's side of the board for that turn. So this can help us make sure that we are stealing some damage from them to use against them. For three and two red, we have cave in, and it reads, we may remove a red card from our hand from the game instead of paying its mana cost, and it will do two damage to each creature and each player. Next, we've got kind of a jack of all trade cards in the first eruption. For two and a red, it's a saga. On one, first eruption deals one damage to each creature without flying. On two, it will ramp us for two mana. And on three, we can sacrifice a mountain. If we do, First Eruption deals three damage to each creature. The beauty of First Eruption in this deck is when set up with Power Conduit, we can actually remove those lore counters and trigger certain parts of this saga multiple times. So it's not a bad plan to use Power Conduit to keep this alive for additional value. Next up, we have Breaking Point. For one and two red, it reads, any player may have Breaking Point deal six damage to them. If no one does, we destroy all creatures. Creatures destroyed this way can't be regenerated. The beauty of most of our destroy spells is our one creature, Planeswalker, that we're usually going to be depending on is indestructible. Lava Brink Floodgates for three and a red may look like a mana rock that taps and produces two red and ramps us, but in fact, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put a Doom Counter on Lava Burning Floodgates or remove a Doom Counter from it. Once it has three or more Doom Counters on it, we sacrifice it, and when we do, it deals six damage to each creature. So hidden under this mana rock is quite the board wipe. Chain Reaction for two and two red is a sorcery. It says we deal X damage to each creature where X is the total number of creatures on the battlefield. So this is one of those cards that's going to be a really effective board wipe and against decks that want to flood the board. Next up, we have Pulverize for four and two red. It says we may sacrifice two mountains instead of playing its mana cost, and if we do, we destroy all artifacts. And finally, in this section, I have a card I kind of consider the odd man out. Shiny Impetus for two in a red. Enchants a creature, and that creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded, which means it can no longer attack us or a planeswalker we control, which is effectively removal. 
And whenever that enchanted creature attacks, we create a treasure token. Since a goaded creature has to attack each turn, this is ramp, kind of removal, and extra damage, but it's going from one of our opponents to another, and we'll take that. Now that we've gone through all the cards in this deck list, let's have a gander at what makes a run in the mana base. Forge of Heroes. It taps for a colorless, or we can tap it and choose target commander that entered the battlefield this turn, and we put a 1-1 counter on it if it's a creature, or a loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. The beauty of this is, when Sarkhan comes into play with 4 loyalty on him, it immediately puts him to 5, and then if we plus 1 him, he'll go to 6, which means the following turn if we want, we can already get his emblem, which makes it very achievable, as I said earlier on. The other part of it that's very nice is, if we turn him into a creature before we tap this, it acts as a pump spell. Next up we have Myriad Landscape. It enters the battlefield tapped, it taps for colorless, and if we pay two and tap it, we can sacrifice it to get two basic land cards that share a type from our library and put them directly onto the battlefield tapped. Rogue's Passage taps for a colorless, and if we pay four and tap it, we can make a creature unblockable till the end of turn, which is very important in a Voltron strategy deck. And finally, we have Mountains. We have 21 Mountains in this deck. Now that we have looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Just a quick reminder, our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. This does include the cost of shipping, but not our basic lands. The average deck cost for Sarkin the Dragon Speaker on oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $57.23. Our deck cost is a little bit lower at $21.92. If you want to see a detailed breakdown of the deck cost, there will be a link in the description. This deck was built on a budget, but if you have the resources, here are some deck betterments and improvements you might want to consider. But to be honest, I could certainly use more suggestions in the comments below, since this is a very odd duck. Let's add an Opal Palace. We can tap it for one colorless mana, or we can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool in our commander's color identity. If we spin this mana to cast our commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of additional 1-1 counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. We're going to remove a mountain. Next, we're going to suggest you add an Immolating Gyre. For 4 and 2 red, it reads, Immolating Gyre does X damage to each creature in each planeswalker you don't control, where X is the number of instants and sorcerer cards in your graveyard. In order to add it, we're going to remove Breaking Point, since there will be times our opponents will pay that 6 life and shut us down when we need a board wipe. Blasphemous Act costs 8 in a red, and reads, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and then Blasphemous Act deals 13 damage to each creature. In order to add it, we're going to remove Cave In, because this is just far more advantageous. Now, if you like this deck list or any of the cards in it, please check out Mythic Games Colorado. The link will be in the description. They're my local LGS that I love to support. Check out our Oathbreaker playlist and our Holly Deck playlist here on the end card if you want to see more from this signature spell bomb. And again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak another deck.